absolutely a necessity. And what's interesting is that we did a, a study recently where we found that a lot of small businesses are not utilizing social media to their benefit, which is why we're so thrilled about the partnership that we have with, with Twitter. And perhaps many of you heard about the partnership recently that we announced. And it's a real opportunity for us to develop content, expose that content to our small business owners, help our small business owners with opportunities on how they can increase their sales, right? how to get uh, feedback in a real-time basis. And just to give you uh, a couple of examples here, we're going to uh, really focus on helping small businesses build customer engagement increase sales using mobile apps. We want to give you tips for retaining your top talent. You know, what we're going to include uh, in this information are videos, infographics, white papers, how-to guides developed by Chase and Twitter. It's all about understanding the value, right, of, of using Twitter. We're going to share this content via a newly launched at Chase small business Twitter handle. And we're going to have several local events like this one to help our small businesses really understand how we can help. And this is a really exciting part here. Uh, Chase is going to award over one million in free advertising, free Twitter advertising credits to Chase business clients, our payment tech customers, our Chase Inc. card customers. And we're really excited about this program. We're going to have details about this program uh, in early fall. And we really want our customers to understand you know, just how social media can really translate into low-cost marketing, constant you know, exposure, and more importantly, as I mentioned earlier, some real-time feedback uh, for, for your business. Mm -hmm. So I am, uh, again, thrilled to be here. I want to acknowledge uh, my business banking colleagues. Uh, that are here today. There's many of them in the room, perhaps many of your bankers, but I do want to recognize uh, Wole Kosum, who's our National Sales uh, Director uh, from New York. Wole, we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, Jeremy West, who's our San Francisco Market Manager, and then Todd Hines, who is our Market Manager for San Jose, way there in the back. And so now I'd like to introduce, uh, our, again, our co-host. Again, thrilled to, to have the, our event here at this venue. But I do want to introduce Adam Bain, who is the president of Global Revenue. Adam, again, thank you so much for having us. We're thrilled, and we look forward to today's event. Thanks, Alice. Um, just real quick, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining today. Um, Alice was, was uh, pointing to the maximum occupancy uh, right. sign. This right. is 39. <laughs> We've got a little bit more, almost 10 times uh, that. So please uh, don't tell anybody. Um, you actually are part of the inaugural group. This whole floor and wing with inside of Twitter just recently opened up uh, about two weeks ago. And you're the first real big group hosting uh, that we're hosting here for this. Uh, we wanted to make it special. Um, hopefully everything works. Keep our fingers crossed uh, anytime you go through uh, the maiden voyage of a, of a new space. Um, you know, just something that was on our mind recently is um, Yesterday actually was the uh, seven year anniversary of the creation of Twitter. And so uh, it's kind of incredible to think about the platform that's been around now for about seven years, um, or just now a day over seven years. What's even more interesting is when we looked back at the first follows on the platform, so the first people that started joining the platform, what we, what we discovered is that businesses were part of the platform from day one. In fact, there are a couple really great San Francisco businesses that joined the platform uh, in the first hundred follows. Uh, people like Mission Pie, for example, who tweets uh, new pies that are coming out of the oven. Um, and what's really incredible is that to see that uh, scale happen now globally. Um, you know, I was just in the UK uh, a couple months ago, and there's a bakery that literally tweets out, uh, it's Albion, it's called Albion Oven uh, in London, and they tweet out, they've learned from Mission Pie, and they've actually they tweet out when hot bread comes out of the oven. Um, and there's actually a device that they've co-created called Baker Tweet, which actually now sits right on the oven and allows them to turn it, whether it's uh, bread or cupcakes or muffins, and it actually tweets for them. So if you're a, if you're a restaurant, you should probably look up Baker Tweet uh, as well. Um, so when we started looking at you know, this history of businesses using the platform, uh, over the last seven years, it's the, the question for us is less now about why Twitter uh, for businesses. Uh, many of you already in the room, and I've talked to a bunch of you already, 
um, know why the platform is interesting and important. The number one question really is how. It's less why and more how. And when we started talking about this question or idea of how, uh, we found like-minded uh, inspiration in talking to people like Alice and everybody at Chase uh, because they also have this goal in helping uh, drive this the answer to the questions of how. So hopefully what you'll see today is the beginning of how Twitter uh, for you as a business. Um, you'll find a bunch more information that, that uh, we begin to give you um, across the board. Um, and even to start that uh, beginning part of how, um, I'd like to invite up uh, a member of our small business team here at, at Twitter, uh, Christine, to uh, begin to uh, present some of the best practices that we've learned along the way uh, for How Twitter. And with that, I'll turn it over to Christine. Thanks, Adam. Hey, everyone. I'm Christine Sang. I'm on the small business marketing team here at Twitter. You can find me at Teen Sang. So my family, they're actually small business owners, right? So my dad started a shoe store in Canal Street in New York City, Chinatown. Soon that grew to five shoe stores. My grandmother had a jewelry store down the block from him, and my mom was an accountant in those stores. So we have a strong tradition of family as small business owners. And so during the summers, my father would make my brother and I work in his shoe store. And he would pay us an awesome commission of 25 cents per shoe. So that's why today I'm in marketing and I'm not in sales, because obviously I'm very, very bad at negotiating my sales commission. So as we grew older, my brother went off to college. He went off to study finance, and I went to study English literature. And so whenever my dad's friends would come over, he would always introduce my brother really proudly. Here's William. He's a finance major. But he would kind of just look blankly at me and not know what to say. So he kind of just avoided me altogether and not introduced me at all. So that was the beginning of my daddy issues. Does he love me? Does he love me not? What's going on here? Is he not proud of me? Well, and then I thought maybe because English literature is not valued in Asian cultures. You have to be a doctor. You have to go into finance, go into consulting, uh, be a lawyer. Well, Dad, a few years later, look at me now. I'm working on Twitter, right? Are you proud of me? <laughs> Dad? But, no. He's still not proud of me. So, whenever we go home, he still introduces my brother, who's a consultant now. Here's William. He's a consultant. Christine, like, what? Like, so, he still doesn't introduce me. So, one day, I went to my dad. I was like, WTF, Dad? Like, do you, like, what's going on here? Why do you keep avoiding me? And he told me, Christine, you know, actually, I'm really proud that you work at Twitter. But you know what? I just don't get it. So it's not that you know, he didn't love me. He, was not, he wasn't proud of me. He just didn't get it. So he didn't know how to introduce me. He didn't know how to introduce English literature either, because that wasn't part of his curriculum when he was growing up. He grew up in Taiwan. But just like he can't avoid me forever because I am his daughter and he's kind of stuck with me. He can't avoid Twitter forever, right? Because as a small business owner, his customers are on Twitter and your customers are probably on Twitter as well. With 200 million active users per month, we can no longer ignore this. So today I'm going to give you a framework to how to think about Twitter for your business. And hopefully this will spawn a lot more ideas for you as you go back. And the panelists that will come on later today will dig into more of the nitty gritty with you. So hopefully today we'll turn this I don't get it into I do get it. So before we dig into that, I want to talk about this notion of ideas. Is Twitter a new idea? I want to propose that it's actually not a new idea. So if you think about snail mail, US Postal Service, the 10 times better version of that is email. Right? So I just want, again, for us to wrap our heads around this. Here are no new ideas. Just ideas made 10 times better. All new ideas are really good. Stand on the shoulders of previous ideas that have worked really well. Right? So then you think about yellow pages or physical listings of your business from your phone number, your address. And 10 times better version of that is Yelp. Right? So it provides content, it provides ratings, it provides reviews. It's a much richer experience for your customers. So like Adam said, Twitter has been around since 2006, seven years now. 
But Twitter is also not a new idea. As many of you know, Twitter is 140 characters. That's because it's born out of this idea of SMS text messages. Right? So Twitter is just a 10 times better version of SMS text messages. It's real time, it's faster, it's more open, it gives you more access to customers. So I just want us to remember this framework and we'll come back to it in a little bit. So just like there are no new ideas with the technology that we talked about, there are no new ideas in human behavior. Right? Human behavior is really important in marketing. There are all kinds of human behavior that appeals to us, whether it's feeling the need to be secure or to be loved, wanting to be entertained with humor. Today we're going to talk about three base human behaviors that apply to most of us. So they are this idea of exclusivity, engagement, and relevance. So exclusivity is this base human behavior of wanting to feel special, right? Wanting to have that sneak peek, wanting to share secrets. If you think about uh, back in high school, everyone wants to be part of the cool kids, right? One of the popular girls or part of the football team. And then there's this idea of engagement, wanting to be interested in what you're engaged with, right? You want to have a back and forth conversation with someone. And then relevance. Relevance is the idea of caring deeply about what you're engaged with. Right? You don't want things that are inappropriate for you. You want things that are relevant and that are interesting to you. So why is this important? Because this helps us understand how to approach marketing. And what is marketing? Marketing is changing people's behavior by making them realize they need something they never knew before. So making them realize they need to spend $100 at a fancy dinner, or they need to buy a new car, right? or they need to get uh, legal services, so marketing is all about changing people's behaviors. And in order to change people's behaviors, you need to apply your knowledge about what, is, what are these base behaviors that appeals to everyone. Right, so that's why commercials like this one do not work. Twitter just helps you do it 10 times better. 
It extends what you're already doing well for your business. So let's talk about exclusivity first. So remember exclusivity is this idea of wanting to be in the know, wanting to feel special, wanting to have that behind the scenes sneak peek. So this is a house party flyer. I'm sure for those of us you know, who are big partiers in college and in high school, we've all seen this. It's pretty generic, right? There's nothing too special about this. Now imagine receiving this VIP invite. It makes you feel a little bit more special. It's a little bit more exclusive. You'll probably put this on your refrigerator and hang it up and show it proudly. Whereas with this flyer, you'll probably just crumble it up and throw away in the garbage can, right? This is how people interact with each other in order to make each other feel more special, feel more exclusive. This happens in businesses as well. So this is an example from Macworld. Of course, it's a large business, but again, we're putting it up here to make a point. My Macworld is this annual event held here in San Francisco in which they do some product launches and releases. And you can see this room is filled. And this person says, it doesn't matter that all the news outlets will cover this. I want to be one of the first people in the world to know and to see the new products. Right? So this idea of being the first to know is really, really important. So you can apply this on Twitter as well. So this is alter, oh, so, right, so on Twitter, right, so everyone is in that room, in that Mac world, and your messaging is limited to that room. Just like your messaging is limited to that crumbled flyer or the VIP messaging. By Twitter, you can spread it. We can help you do it 10 times better. You have more access to your customers, right? So also Brooklyn does this with their new products that come in. So this is a new shoe that they get, and whenever they get a new product, they tweet out an image of it to their followers, and their followers retweet it and spread it to their followers. And they do a really great thing where whenever they get a UPS shipment, they take a picture of that shipment and they tweet it out. So here you see a picture of a blue shirt, and you can actually still see the wrapping behind there. Right? So even like tweeting that the UPS guy is coming is really great content, and their followers actually get quite excited about it because they feel like they're the first to know. So a few months ago, we launched Vine. It's our six-second video product. Right, so you can see here, this is a software company here in San Francisco, and they vine sort of behind the scenes looks at their office. Right? And so if you're professional services, or if you're a B2B, you can do behind the scenes as well. You can interview your employees. You can give viewers a look into what's going on in your office. Right? And we may think that as businesses, this is not a big deal, but for our customers, they really want to be able to humanize you and feel close to you. 